Welcome to FiberTrek. My name is Sarah. Welcome. You are most welcome to my studio space here in the Northwoods of Maine. On this first of a four-part series, The Turning of the Year, I will be sharing with you some baking and ice craft that I have been exploring. I'm going to update you on my knitting, of course. If you support this podcast financially, a deep heartfelt thank you. I'm so glad you're all here. Let's catch up. Christmas memories I've been working so much lately I can barely find the time to sleep Yeah, I spend my time running around Keeping people pleased But this is my favorite holiday It's a chance to start over new Cause I missed you so I'm letting go of everything but you are the good times with you baby this year it's just gonna be you and me hang by the fire and chill isn't this how it's supposed to be making our christmas memory At the heart of my holiday baking this year was candied peel. I knew I wouldn't be able to find the quality or variety that I wanted at my local grocery store, so I decided to make it myself. I used lemon and oranges, and I blanched the rinds or the peel multiple times in boiling water for a few minutes before I put together a simple syrup of sugar and water or a one-to-one ratio. And I boiled the peels for about an hour, a little bit more. I was looking for them to turn translucent and clear. So that could vary depending on your simmering temperatures. Once I removed the peel from the sugar water, I let mine air dry. I did not roll it in sugar because I was going to be using these in baked goods, but instead finished it in the oven. They can make their own treat uh, as well as being used in baking, but you may have guessed what I am about to attempt for this holiday season. I am making fruitcake. I was very inspired by Nigel Slater's Christmas Chronicles, and this is also my husband's favorite dessert. So I have taken a few liberties with my fruit combination. I am using dried cherries and blueberries. I omitted glacé cherries, and I also replaced a little bit of the flour with rye flour as inspired by the cookbook Advent. We are feeding this cake brandy and trying to wait patiently while it marinates.
I've really enjoyed a number of the cookbooks that I've purchased this year because not only have they come with recipes, but they've also come with simple craft ideas that are easily accessible where you have things around the home and ice luminaries is definitely one I wanted to try. In the Nordic Winter Cookbook, she actually uses a bunt pan, which I am going to do, but I did some research and I found that you can use balloons, and as you can see here, I'm using a couple of different types of plastic tubs. You need one to hold the, create the base and one to create the depression for the candle. And then you can choose to incorporate some natural elements. I did see examples where people used cranberries and of course you could leave them plain as well. The bunt pan I simply just filled to the top where I would put the cake batter and then I froze mine outside. Um, you can put them in a freezer. I didn't have space and it was below freezing in our neck of the woods so I opted to just use the outdoors. It is easy to release these once they're done. You can just simply run a bit of hot water around the edge and they can pop right out. I left mine overnight and they froze solid. Super fun. They had a lot of lovely ambiance. They're very whimsical and charming. I would encourage you to give this project a try if your environment or freezer allows it. Hello and welcome to the spinning of the year. I feel like that's what I should be calling it. I forgot my camera last weekend. It's been a whirlwind to uh, get bits of the footage that I wanted, but I persevered even though I was very disappointed to not have my camera and uh, I did use my phone uh, and I think it all worked out. But, uh, and, and we're gonna have a really quick turnaround so we're gonna get uh, spin, uh, turning of the year, I almost said spinning of the year, turning of the year one and turning of the year two very close together. But then I think things will hopefully take on the pace uh, that is appropriate throughout the month, which is once a week. Uh, let's see. <laughs> if you are a patron of this podcast, thank you so much for your support. If you've donated through Ko Kofi, coffee, um, a deep heartfelt thank you. I appreciate all those little bits and pieces that encourage and motivate me to keep up with content and exploring and discovering um, new ways to document that and tell a little story that's happening over here and hopefully uh, become part of your story and a springboard for you and your creativity. On this very short edition of the fiber portion, fiber and knitting portion, um, I would have shown you, I can't remember if I did or not, uh, Cameron's finished Icelandic sweater. I have been working on a piece called Fenar from the Best of Lopi out of Alifos Lopi and my own sheep fleece and I finished it and I've given it to him and he is now refusing to give it back or take it off. Uh, I thought maybe the neckline was a bit wide and he was like, nope, it's fine. And he wouldn't give it to me. So it has gone on uh, to be cherished and loved. And that is so deeply gratifying. I don't think anything makes me happier than being an auntie to those three children. So speaking of which, uh, Madison, my niece tried it on and decided that she wanted a lopi sweater and so i think we're going to uh, plan for that uh, this upcoming winter in the meantime as we continue on our exposure therapy uh, experience for her and wool the knitting for olive has arrived for the uh, sweater that i'm planning to knit which uh, name escapes me but i'm sure it will be somewhere on the screen um, this is a yoke sweater. It is knit bottom up and it has dog paws on it, which is what she requested. And I am going to knit it 
out of Knitting for Olive Heavy Worsted. I am using Brown Bear, Marzipan, and Hazelnut. This will be the main color, and these will be the two contrast. This is knit in a Pierre Ghent, I think, originally, um, in a DK. I think this yarn is gonna end up performing very similar in gauge uh, to that. For me, I'm a super tight knitter. And so I will, I hope to be casting that on this afternoon and we can talk about it next time, which will be very soon uh, uh, and how it's progressing. So I'm going to knit that up for her, but she did want an exact, uh, the, the exact same pattern as Cameron. Um, and we talked about doing it in a glacial blue with brown and uh, like oatmeal uh, for the yolk portion. So we'll see how, um, how we get on with that in the new year as well. Now, when I finished Cameron's Finar, I did have a bit of, I mean, I was happy that it was done, but I also was like, I don't know, it was, it was last weekend and in my camera, I was feeling a little out of sorts. And so I just kind of decided to lean into some more knitting for the children. And I had this, I decided to knit them each pair of mittens for the holiday uh, for their stocking. And so I went, uh, to Skein Deer Knits, Ellie of Skein Deer Knits. She has a lot of uh, beautiful patterns, easy to lean into, lots of different weights of yarn, um, really beautiful, um, uh, easily uh, followed patterns, easy patterns to follow uh, with charts. And so I picked up the worsted, I can't remember what it's called, easy salbu mitts, heavy salbu mitts, Anyway, all of it is uh, described in, in written format um, below or in the notes. But this is the pair that I have knit for Cameron. Uh, this is all deep stash yarn that I have no idea what it is. It's, again, part of the gratifying theme of moving bits and pieces, kind of lone skeins out uh, in, into something that works. And so, um, yeah, so I actually ended up reducing, I think, the needle gauge or the needle size that I used than that what is recommended. And I used a US 8 and a US 6 uh, for, um, for cams. And then for Madison's, I knit on a US 6 and a US 4. This is some old uh, Nash Island light from Starcraft that I had, and I'm not sure what the white is, although um, I've used the same yarn in both mittens, the same cream base, and I think it's a Romney, a main Romney that I picked up a long time ago um, in at a yarn shop. So I'm going to finish Madison's other mitt, and um, then I'll do the thumbs in an evening. Um, and so since I had knit that for the children, I decided I would knit uh, Annie a bonnet. Um, I've had this in my stash from the Woolen Rabbit forever. I was part of her club. All of these yarns are 100% wool, non-superwash. Uh, and I wanted something for Annie that would work for against her head and her skin. She's eight months old. Um, and so I landed on this in this pretty blue and uh, and it's, you know, squishy merino, um, and it will perform hopefully expected versus putting like Icelandic lopi <laughs> on, the, on their head right now. So we'll ease them into the wool wearing. I'm going to be knitting a design from Lisa Chemry. Uh, she has a variety of different bonnets. The one that I'm knitting, uh, the name escapes me right now, um, but it comes in a variety of different weights. So I think she has a worsted DK and fingering uh, weight version. And uh, I've knit for Cameron um, a couple of her patterns, and there's a couple more that I'm planning to knit for him that are Lord of the Rings themed. So she's got a, she just the the children's knits are sophisticated and elegant but still playful and um and I love that about her designs and so um usually she's my go-to uh for children's pieces um her and tin can knits a kind of um when I want to do something for the children I usually start there or um if I see something I like um I will often go to Tin Can Knits and use um the patterning uh for the children's um or look at that sizing to see how it, this other pattern is going to work, etc. So um, I, I lean heavily on Fragonet and Tin Can Knits uh, to understand um, putting together children's sizing. Now, uh, Lisa Chemery of Fragonet also had another uh, dress, it's a short sleeve dress. I can't remember the name. Um, I looked at them a while ago and purchased them, and, um, and I'm feeling that 
spinning of the year right now. So I'm just wanting to get this finished so I can edit it and get it out. Um, but I'm going to knit a little dress in this purple uh, BFL I picked up a long time ago. That seems to be a running theme a long time ago. Um, this I picked up at Spa, which happens in uh, Freeport the Northeast Textiles Association, maybe. Um, this is from Jean Marek Rauskowski uh, Studio, and this is about 500 yards, and so I think I'll be able to get this little short sleeved kind of pinafore uh, for Annie out of this. Did I mention Annie's my other niece? She's eight months old, I think I did. It's the second time I've recorded this, so I wanna make sure I get all the information in there. Um, so that's kind of what's been on the needles um, and what I've been thinking about, what I'm gonna focus on in the next couple weeks. The other thing I thought I would just update you on is I finished this, I didn't finish, strike that. Um, I, I connected uh, all of my finished crochet squares using the contiguous um, bind on, contiguous <laughs> I don't know the words. Um, but anyway, here it is, kind of, uh, and I, I really, oh, 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 I really love it, and I want to get back to it, um, and so that is another plan for the holiday break, um, is to kind of uh, figure out where I am, and also take a look at the colors and how they're landing in the design and layout, and make sure that I'm kind of using lots of diff uh, the different scraps that I have. I have found more since I've d dug up scraps for these mittens, and I've added it to the bucket. So um, I'm excited to kind of, it's a lot of cool tones, and so I was looking for warmer tones, and I did find some. So I'm excited to incorporate some more warmer tones into the overall look of the centers. So that's really it for what I've been working on since I finished Cameron's sweater. I have been knitting away on the sleeve of my high-low sweater by Tidal Yarns. I've been talking about that for a while. Uh, so that sleeve should be finished pretty quickly here, and then I will pick up for the second. The yarn all arrived for the yell, and so now it's time to start thinking about swatching, and that is going to be unfolding in the new year as well. So there's you know, there's some things on the horizon, some bigger projects on the horizon, and some, um, it'll feel good to wrap up some of these small projects and kind of clear the books uh, as I go into the new year and thinking about um, something epic like the yell. The last thing I thought I would mention is that I've become an affiliate of the Woolly Thistle, and that seems to be a natural collaboration between myself and that particular company uh, that uh, we both love this kind of um, minimally processed, small flock, um, you know, independent mill, kind of place-based yarns, and that's a really excellent supplier here in the United States. And the affiliate link simply means if you click through that link and shop, uh, the podcast gets a bit of kickback, which goes into administrative uh, work, yeah, administrative fees, um, equipment, uh, my time, etc. So, uh, so if that's of interest to you in supporting the podcast, you can do that uh, on your way over to the Woolly Thistle. Cronin and I have been friends for a very long time, pre-Woolly Thistle, and we've traveled to Edinburgh uh, Yarn Festival twice, um, and yeah, we both have a real deep love of this soulful stash, and um, yeah, I would encourage you to take a look at uh, her particular inventory as you think about what your projects are going to be in the new year. Um, and the Woolly Thistle has a variety of different uh, brands from the workhorses that we love, like Lopi and Ralma and Peace Fleece and Jagger Spun to uh, Uist and Daughter of a Shepherd and um, uh, she has Spindrift, Jameson and Smith. So there's a lot of variety there and a lot of uh, opportunity to lean into the old or, or try something new. <laughs> On that note, I'm going to bid you a fond farewell because I've got some editing to do and casting on and and then we're going to go to the next, we're going to spin on to the next episode of Turning of the Year. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Bye.